Late last spring, Forecast Ski Magazine and a quartet of unlikely heroes tempted Mother Nature's will and hit the open road for a two-week journey through a historic area steeped in tradition, the Powder Highway. While you wouldn't question their motives, you might question their timing. Question our timing? Uh, it might snow in April. Seriously, who wants for pal in April? Hailed as a world-renowned road trip for two plankers, the Powder Highway makes its way through the Kootenai region of British Columbia, where deep snow, funky towns, and some of the most down-home ski resorts on the planet exist. Along for the ride to Rossland, Nelson, Sandin, and Fernie are these four characters. Backcountry trailblazers Stan Ray and Anna Siegel, and a couple of Olympic medalists, Alex Beaulieu Marchand and Mike Riddle. Oh, and I can't forget about Jonathan Grellens, a local go-getter and tour guide for this leg of the trip. Back in 1897, a bearded Norwegian miner named Olaus Yeldness put on the first ski competition in the Great White North at Red Mountain. I'll be performing a one and a half pike. <laughs> Fifty years later, not long after the mining shafts were shuttered, the first chairlift in Western Canada was erected. Three, two, one, drop it! And skiers have been reaping the spoils of Red's 4,200 acres of fabled terrain ever since. All right, drop it five. Just around the bend from Big Red is the town of Rosslyn, which back in the day was one of the biggest cities in Western Canada. With a multitude of world-famous mines, 42 saloons, and 21 brothels. Yeah, times sure have changed since then. But what Rosslyn may lack in riches and carousing nowadays, it more than makes up for with charm, complete with a tip of the hat to its storied past. Let's get this party started! Next episode of Beyond the Powder Highway, our heroes head east to the Queen City of Nelson, where they link up with closet superstar Sam Cooch at Whitewater Ski Resort. Yeah, copy that. All cameras are ready. All right, Sam, it's your turn. Give us a wave when you are ready, and I will count you in. All right, Sam Cooch dropped in three, two, one. Drop. Are you kidding me, Sam Cooch? Did you say Sam Cooch? 
He's like Sammy Carlson mixed with Kenny Thovex mixed with like a bunny rabbit. No! Oh. <laughs> wow. We'll get back to Sam Cooch in a moment. Because when we last left Alex Beaulieu Marchand, Anna Siegel, Mike Riddle, and Stan Ray, they were about to continue their journey along the Powder Highway to Nelson, BC. A stunning one hour drive from Rosslyn. The Queen City is nestled in the heart of the Kootenays and is home to Whitewater Ski Resort, a true powder hounding classic for any traveling Wilbury. the nearby town, this family-owned, community-driven, and backwoods-style ski operation hasn't changed all that much over the years. <laughs> Home to some of the most breathtaking mountains and inbounds terrain on the continent, Whitewater serves as somewhat of a throwback in time, which is just how the locals like it. to the Wild West style of living in Rosslyn back in the day. Thanks to the profitable Silver King mine, Nelson became a bit more of a cosmopolitan city in the Boomtown era. With Victorian style buildings, its own streetcar system, and two railways passing through the area. But in more recent years, the area has evolved into an eclectic cultural and outdoorsy community. Filled with talented and humble individuals from all walks of life. Much like our hero's newfound friend, Sam Cooch. left, right, and center, and it kind of just a little distracting, and I was trying to get myself amped up. Come on, dog. You got this, doggy. Come on, dog. Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> Nothing beats a good old-fashioned tailgate party. Eh, with the exception of 50 centimeters being forecasted for Whitewater's closing day. Prompting our heroes to stay put for more pow before making their merry way to the ghost town of Santa. Completely disconnected, was, this guy is. Any good road trip involves a bit of gambling, particularly when it comes to the Powder Highway. So when Alex Beaulieu, Marchand, Anna Siegel, Mike Riddle, and Stan Ray saw a heap and helping of snow in the forecast, they opted to roll the dice and stay put in Nelson for Whitewater Ski Resort's final day of the season. they awoke, 48 centimeters had fallen, prompting the entire town to rally even harder for the time-honored tradition of closing day. All oh, the stoke birds are chirping today, boys! Steak! Steak! Woo-hoo! Yeah! Woo-hoo! Yeah! 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 It was like, I was going to snow like up to here in all the windshields. <laughs> Best fish I've ever got. That was insane. So Mike Riddle here. Uh, how do you get ready for a big powder day like today and how do you mentally prepare for it? Uh, you know, you just gotta visualize and then when you get up there you just send. Sender's gotta send, man. Sender's gotta send. Yeah, thanks Dan. Any dogs out there? Oh yeah, every dog has his day. Um, get it dog. <laughs> you got this dog. <laughs> Probably best last day ever anyway. Once Whitewater's bull wheels stopped turning, it was time to move along. And with word that even more snow had blanketed the hills up north, the crew continued on to the legendary ghost town of Sandy. town with boardwalks, three massive mines, two railroads, and a bustling population of 5,000, Sandin fell into decline due to the drop in silver pricing, forcing most of the residents to pack up their possessions and leave. The ghost town has since become lost in time and offers an unfiltered look at what life was like during the early 1900s, all while being surrounded by foot-accessed ancient groves and a whole lot of Kootenai cold smoke.
Boeing 11 deep days on the road in the Kootenays. Alex Beaulieu Marchand, Anna Siegel, Mike Riddle, and Stan Ray made their way up and over the highest mountain pass in British Columbia, towards the fourth and final stop on their journey down the Powder Highway, Fernie Alpine Resort. <laughs> Situated in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, it only takes one good look at the towering peaks and wide open bowls of the rugged Lizard Range to see how this awe-inspiring terrain has bred a wild child like Dylan Siggers, who stepped up to show off his home turf. Hi yo! Get up, rise up, and go on my way. Don't turn it around. Make myself proud. town of the same name. A former coal mining camp, Fernie is brimming with brick heritage buildings that harken back to the past, while highlighting its present as a laid-back mountain community with locals who eat, sleep, and breathe skiing, as evidenced by the end-of-season throwdown that is Hot Dog Day. So we just arrived here in uh, Fernie and we figured out it was Hot Dog Day, so we thought we'd get right into it, and uh, luckily our friend Dylan here hooked us up with some retro gear, those pants. Wow. You got a new job? Yep, just uh, started working uh, for Fernie. You know, I'm gonna go uh, make sure everybody's safe. So how many rip dingers and hot doggers can you do on that guy? <laughs> 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 The great Mark Twain once said, there ain't no surer way to find out whether you like people or hate them than to travel with them. Oh my gosh, Ruffin! Fortunately for these travelers, there was a whole lot of love going on. Sometimes it's the people you meet, the sights you see, or in this case, the slopes you ski. But whatever the reason, letting a road like the Powder Highway dictate your own story is something that all skiers should experience. Best friends that anyone could have. We're the three best friends that anyone could have. And you'll name best friends that anyone could have. And we're always, 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 always be together. <laughs> <laughs>